Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome. We're getting ready to go right into the service. We've been dealing with something called divine disruption. Everybody say divine disruptions. Is when God comes in and breaks up some stuff in your life, amen? It can be as simple as having to take the kids to a, to a, to a game, amen? And getting blessed while you're there. How many know your blessing is in the disruption? Yes. Let me say it again. It's, say neighbor, neighbor. I, don't you know this, I don't know if you know this, but your blessing, but your blessing is in the disruption. disruption. Amen. How many have ever been disrupted with having a child? A child. I remember we had a surprise child. One that you didn't plan for. Amen? That's called a what? Divine what? Disruption. Ain't a bad thing. Amen? Even you say, even if you were doing wrong, ain't a bad thing. Guess it was a divine disruption. Because how many after you have a child, it matures you? You got to grow up quickly. Amen? Amen? I had to put the video games down. Are you with me? Had to get to working, amen? Hallelujah. I couldn't be a kid's or us kid any longer. So let's get ready to get into this word. Father, we just thank you right now. We honor you for your presence. And we understand that in your presence is fullness of joy and life forevermore. God, right now, in these next few moments, Holy Spirit, we need you to move like only you can. Show us how you're trying to disrupt our lives. Lord, there's someone at home that's watching this. They need a word from you. There's some that are sitting out in the, in, in the aisles and in, in, in the pews, and they need a word from you, God. There's others, God, they may have come here uh, not, not wanting to come, and they still need a word from you, God. Whatever state, whether far or close, God, speak to our hearts like only you can. Lord, we'll be forever changed. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, Lord, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Holy Spirit, you have a way of just speaking like only you can. Do it on today, Father. Speak to us. We need to hear from you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Come on, saints, in Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. One more time for the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts. And I'm going to review for the sake of reviewing, praise God. I'll spend about three to five minutes reviewing, and then we're going to go straight into it. Amen? Is that all right? Yeah. Amen? And I really believe that this is a prophetic word. This is a word that should transform your very being and your life. Amen? Your very being. Ever say, and my being and my very life is changed by the word of God. My being and my life is changed by the word of God. Now the Bible says we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. God has come that we might have freedom in him. Amen? Turn to your name and say, neighbor, I am called to be free. Oh, some of y'all didn't say it like you meant it. Come on, turn to somebody and say, neighbor, I am called to be free. Amen. I understand part of the freedom is walking in God's truth. You need God's truth. Say, Lord, the, say, say, put your hand on your heart. Say, Lord, make me a lover of your truth. Amen. How many know the truth can hurt sometimes? The truth can cut you. The Bible says the, in, in Hebrews chapter 4, the word of truth is like a two-edged sword. It cuts going in, but it heals coming out. And so you got to allow it to work on your heart. Amen? Amen? So we've been dealing with something called divine disruption. And you see right up here, you see a what? You see a boulder, right? Can everybody see that? Yeah. And it's in the middle of a what? A, a, a highway. A, a highway represents a route that you're going. I'm here to inform you today that God has come to disrupt the route that you're on. Yeah. You're having a divine disruption amen and it's of God it's not of the devil so stop rebuking the devil God is trying to change certain things in your life and he's trying to get your attention and the only way he could get your attention was by disrupting some things it's called a divine disruption notice I didn't say a, a devilish disruption I said a divine disruption 
If you in, in the works of your righteousness, he's trying to come to break that up. Let me repeat that. If you were the, in, if caught up in the works of your righteousness, he's come to break that up. If you've just been backslidden, you haven't been living to the fullness of your potential, he's come to break that up as well. If you have been just coaxing, you know how it is? How many remember when you used to ride a bike and you would coax? You just, you know, if you have a 10 speed or 12 speed, you're just going backwards. And you just floating down the hill. You got that thing out of gear, right? Coaxing. Sometimes we like to coax in our walk with God. Just lay back. God has come and caused a divine disruption to wake us up. Amen. And to rise up to his divine potential. Amen. Notice there's a divine disruption. We define divine as being of, from, or like God. Amen. Meaning it's godly. It's godly. Everybody say it's godly. And a disruption, we defined it as what? Uh, to break apart, to rupture, amen? To throw into disorder. Have you ever had some things thrown into disorder in your life? Had your day planned a certain way, but then God said, what? Had your life planned in a certain way. How many know a divorce would cause a divine disruption? How many know death would cause a divine disruption? How, how, how many know conflict can cause a divine disruption? How many uh, conflicts on the job can cause a divine disruption? How many know problems with the children? Yeah. Talk to me, y'all. Yeah. Can cause a divine disruption. Amen? Yeah. But I'm here to let you know that God can bring you through any divine disruption. See, what God's trying to do is, if you can get a picture of this, he's trying to move you from being a pigeon to an eagle. So some of us, we want to stay on pigeon level. And pigeons flock, but eagles soar. Let me say that again. Pigeons flock, but eagles soar. Now turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm here to let you know that you are called, you really are, to be an eagle. And you are called to soar. Are you with me? Don't end it there. Say, so, so, so neighbor. Come on, whisper to say, so neighbor. Stop hanging with them pigeons. Amen. Pigeons fly low. They ain't going to get us hard. They low riders. God has called you to fly high. Are you with me? When an eagle see, sees a storm coming, other birds are running. You know what an eagle does? Flies into the storm. And not only does he fly, he flies above. He flies in the direction of the storm to it, and then he goes above the storm. As a believer, God's called you to fly above the soul. Pastor, how do, how, but how do I get above the storm? He, here, here's, here's the key. If you want to go high in the kingdom, if you want to go above, everybody say above the storm. The Bible says you got to go low. You want to get above the storm, you're going through some storms in your life, you got to get low. This doesn't make sense, Pastor, but when you go low, guess what? God takes you high. Did you hear me? When, when you go low in the natural, into neology, everybody say neology. The study, K-N-E-E-O-L-O-G-Y, the study of prayer, then guess what? God takes you high to his level to see what he's doing. And you connect with his plan and his will, and then he raises you up to fly above the storm, to soar. He doesn't remove the storm. He just takes you above, and that's what gives you the peace that passes all understanding. You can either be a pigeon or an eagle. It's all right to start off a pigeon, but God's called you to be an eagle. Pigeons, they love the flock. Eagles, they only get together a few times a year. Are you with me? And it's for strategy. 
It's for multiplication. Are you with me? Let's keep going. Acts chapter 7. This gets us right back into our story. I'm going to hammer this. I'm going to hammer this. I want to get this in you. Acts chapter 7. It speaks of the life of Saul, who later became Paul, who wrote a large amount of the Old Testament. It's amazing how God saw the potential in Paul. He saw an eagle in a pigeon. Are you with me? He saw the potential in a murderer. So that's why it doesn't matter where you are right now, where people come from, what they've been through. Guess what? God sees your potential and says, you cannot stay there. Get out with me. Can I talk to the parent for a moment? So you may be on Facebook Live, you may be in this room, and you have a child that in your mind is not rising up to your potential. Can you just look in the spirit right now? Come on, look at me. Look in the spirit with me. Point your, put, your, put your hands to the heavens. Amen. And say, you are called to soar. Amen. Just call their name out. You are called to soar in Jesus' name right now. Amen. Amen. Speak it by faith. Say, they're eagles in Jesus' name. I'm going to call every one of my kids. Howard, Leon, Alexis, Ariana. You're called to soar in Jesus' name. Amen. Call my wife, Tecla Sanders. She's called to soar in Jesus' name. Howard Sanders. You're called to soar in Jesus' name. Ain't no shame in my game. Ain't no shame in talking to the Father. Amen. Oh, well, if somebody hears me, I want everybody to hear me talking to daddy. That's part of that humbling. That's part of that dying to yourself, not worrying about what people think about you. If you're more worried about what people think than what God thinks, then you've missed it. Are you with me? You are called to be an eagle. Now, Acts chapter 7, verse 54. Look at it. Now, when, they, when the crowd had heard these things, they were enraged. And this is a review for you. And basically, basically 55 verse says, but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He wasn't mad that people were mad at him. He wasn't mad that people were judging him. He had already began to see and focus on Jesus. Turn to your neighbor, it's time to focus on Jesus. Come on, just tell me. Turn to somebody and say, it's time to focus on Jesus. 56 verse says, and, he's, and he said, behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Amen? 57 verse, but they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together toward him. And then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. Another name for him is Paul of Tarsus. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And, failing, and falling to his knees, there's that neology. See, got a little harder than what he could bear. I, I would think it would be harder somebody stoning you. Now, understand when we talk about stoning, we're not talking about little pebbles. We're talking about big rocks and big stones that these men are picking up and they're hitting him and throwing them at his body, knocking him in his heads and his vital organs to kill him. And what did he do? Did he run? Look at the script. Did he run? What did he do? He cried out to God. Receive my spirit. Fell, fall, 60 verse. What else did he do? He fell to his knees. Lord, do not hold this sin against him. You know, that's, and when he said this, he fell asleep. You know, some of us, boy, we would be trying to say, Lord, charge him and him and him and her and her. I see you over there hiding back there throwing that stone. You know, now you go on things, good, your disruption coming in your life. You know what? Guess what? You're going to pay. You're going to pay. You're going to pay. I can't wait to fix it. I can show all of y'all that I'm walking with God. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get them people right. Can I remind you of a little scripture? A little text. Jesus says, vengeance is mine. He didn't say like McDonald's, have it your way. He said, vengeance is mine. Everybody say, disruption. 
Everybody say divine disruption. We talked about the disruption that was ahead. Amen. Acts chapter 9, look at it. Say, Lord, help me to get this. Oh, I guess we should pray to the Holy Spirit because he's the one that gives us understanding. So Holy Spirit, help me to get this in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Amen. This is going to transform your life. Some of you have seen part of this before, but my, my, my heart is that you even get a greater revelation as we go through this, the, the scriptures. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. But Saul, still breathing threats and murders against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. Now, again, I want to remind you, this guy was a murderer. Paul was a serial killer. He was orchestrating the killing of Christians in the early church. This guy was evil. He was live backwards evil in the name of religion. Have you ever met some people that are religious and they are just evil? They can quote more scriptures than you. But they're what? Evil. You don't see no love with them in their kids. They're kicking the dog and the cat. Are you with me? Service is out. They're cussing you out before they can leave the parking lot. Because they're what? Evil. They haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to begin to transform their heart into inward parts. Well, say, Pastor, it sounds like what you're describing. You may be on Facebook. You may be here. It sounds like you're describing me. Well, you can end that today. You can leave evil at the altar. Are you with me? Again, it's living backwards. Second verse. And he asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if the found any belonging to the way, the way of Christ, men or women, he didn't care whether you're male or female, he might bring them down to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. Everybody said divine interruption. Hey, God is getting ready to come in some things, amen, and break some stuff up. Aren't you glad when God breaks some stuff up? And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And right here, we said the, the sign for a holy disruption. Bang, whack, pow. Because that's what God does to your life. He breaks some stuff up to break you in. Let me say that again. God will break some stuff up in your life to break you into his plan and purpose and destiny. God will break up some stuff in your life to break you into his plan, and his destiny for your life. He says, you got too comfortable. I'm trying to get you out of place of comfort and complacency and move you into your divine destination in me. Amen? Look at Acts 9-4 one more time. You see, and falling to the ground. <laughs> Some of God got to knock you to the ground. Is he either you'll get it by revelation or tribulation? Paul wasn't getting it by revelation. He thought and he was so stoked in his religion and he thought he was doing a good work for God, but he actually was killing the life of God out of the church and falling to the ground. Sound like he's, getting to, he's about to learn about some neology. He heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Does everybody agree that that's a divine disruption? I can't hear you. Let's keep going. Understand, why would he want to disrupt Paul? Why? Because God sees seed and he sees destiny. Everything that was in Paul 20 years from this point was already in him. He always, he, God already saw two-thirds of the New Testament in Paul. God already saw the church of Corinth being formed with Paul's words and the church of Galatia and the church of Ephesus. And are you with me? He saw the king of Agrippa being almost convinced who was, was an ungodly man. 
by the faith, by the words of Paul. He saw the church of Philippi being developed by the words of Paul. He saw all these things before it happened because he saw not just the apple or the seed. He saw the, the orchard that was going to come out of him. And God sees not just the seed that's in this apple, but he sees the tree. And in the tree, he sees all the fruit that are going to make a forest. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, there's a forest on the inside of me. Oh, you don't got that. You, don't, you ain't getting it yet. Some of you going to be eating some chicken tonight, that gospel bird. You're going to be pulling some wings apart, and then God's going to hit you right then. Some of you going to be, you say, you're, you're, you're Italian. You're going to be eating some pizza tonight, getting a slice of pizza. And right when you biting that pepperoni, just right, Spirit of God going to hit you and remind you of what he was saying right now. Amen? Say that one time. There's a forest inside of me. There's an orchard inside of me. There's a harvest inside of me. There's a legacy inside of me. You better remind yourself. Why do you think the devil coming after you? Why do you think the devil's coming after your family? Why do you think the devil's coming after your relationships in your family? It's not about you. It's about the legacy on inside of you. Oh, you know, sometimes we like to think it's really about us. Turn to your neighbor. You're going to have some fun right now with your neighbor. Say, turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I love you, but you really ain't all that. Amen? It's not about you. It's about him in you. Second Corinthians speaks about we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And the treasure is Christ to let us know that excellency is not coming from us, but from God. Acts chapter 9, verse 5. Stop asking me all these questions. You got this for us, right? Now, this is what you got to do. And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am what? I am what? Jesus. I am what? Jesus. There I see. I am Jehovah. Notice he didn't say I was. Amen. God is the great I am. He's always in the now. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, get out of your past and move into the now and move into the future. God always speaks in the now and in the future. I am Jesus whom you are per persecuting, but rise and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. See, you're persecuting me now, but guess what? I don't see you just as a persecutor. Rise up, because I got some orders for you, Paul. I got a plan for you, Paul. You may not know it right now, but there's a plan for your life. Into the city, and you will be told what you are to do. Seven, the men who are traveling with them stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. They hear, can you imagine hearing the voice of God, but not seeing anything? Saul rose from the ground, and though, although his eyes were open, get up here real quickly, ASAP and Chris, get up here real quickly. Although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days, he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now, let me tell you something quickly, quickly. Guess what? Can you imagine? I'll, 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 be, I'll be Paul and I can't see anything. So you got to lead me. Lead me across the stage to the curtain. Come on. You got to lead me. I bet he was like a real hesitant. Can you imagine? He saw all the light. And, 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 and I'm closing my eyes, but his eyes were open. Can you imagine your eyes being open, but you can't see? Because he's been blinded by the light of God. And they're guiding him. They're guiding a grown man. Just take me back the other way, too. And this is how some of, some of God is guiding us, and we're, we're pulling back on him. He said, I'm trying to take you through this situation. Will you just trust me? Will you just let go and let God? Everybody said, let, let go and let God. Now I try to guide me when I let go and let God. You saw how hard it was? I just guide me across the state. Come on, guide me, push. Come on, guide me. Guide me. Don't be scared. Guide me. Take me the other way. Come on. Guide me. Don't be scared. Come on, take me. Come on. Take me. Are you with me? Give them a hand clap. Say, neighbor, let go and let God. Turn to somebody else. Say, let go and let God. Come on, I'm going to finish. Acts 9, 10. Are you getting something out of this? 
I don't care what the situation, I don't care if it's your children, I don't care if it's your spouse, I don't care if it's your job, I don't care if, I don't care what it is. Let go and let God. You said, Pastor, I plan to be further by now in my life. Let go and let God. Give the thing back to God and watch what he does. But you don't know my family, Lord, it's so messed up. Let go and let God. Acts chapter 9, verses 10. 10 through 11. Let's look at it. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias? And he said, what? Here I am, Lord. You know, that's how we are, Lord. So I pray that first. Now, when you, when you make yourself available, God's going to take you. Amen? We have that song we sing, I give myself away. So that's what I, I can imagine Ananias was in, in his prayer closet praying. And he said, I give myself away so you. I give myself away. God said, okay. Got something for you. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. Before, for behold, he is what? Praying. Now notice this. Here my Lord, send me. Here my Lord. And then God says, picks him up and says, send me. Amen. Look at the 12th verse. And he said, and he's seen in a vision a man named Ananias. Say, so God already shown him in a vision what's going to happen. Come and lay his hand on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered and said, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to, to bind all who call on your name. What is it saying? I heard that he was murdering Christians like me. Can I make it even more clear? He says, you want me to go lay hands on this blind man, but I heard he's killing folk like me. He's got Christians in the crosshairs. He's trying to end, uh, he's trying to end our very existence. Are you sure you got this right? You want me to do what? How many know sometimes God will call you into some places that you don't want to go? He'll call you to go talk to that loved one. He'll call you to go back to your family members. He'll call you to go back on your job where they mock you sometimes. They tell you, it don't take all that. He'll call you to go pray for that person that made fun of your faith. Why? Because it's really not about you. It's about being obedient to him so that he can get the glory. Amen? Amen. So 13 verse says, but Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much the evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go for he is chosen, 15 verse, an instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So you see, I got up here, uh, what, it was, what is this called? An eye or a vision chart. An eye chart, right? And it shows how good or how bad your vision is. Amen? And this one is slightly blurred because right now, God had begun to speak to Paul, but his vision was blurred. It says that I've already shown Paul in a vision that a, name may, a man named Ananias would come to you. So you see that he's beginning to see, but there's still blindness there. Sometimes we're like that. We just want to have that partial obedience. We want to see a little bit. <laughs> but Lord, show me the whole plan for I do it. They know just receive Ananias so I can give you some more. Amen. So I can give you some more sight. Amen. Because the route you're going is too blurred right now. Let's keep going. So God has to give Paul his biblical glasses to see, amen? Say, Lord, anoint my eyes so I can see where you're taking me. 
Say, I think, I thought I knew. But I need you to sit, help me. I need you to anoint me. So that I can see. Amen. So Anias departed and into the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when immediately, everybody say immediately. immediately. Something like scales from, fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. And then he arose and was baptized. And taking food, he was strengthened. Amen? We said taking a leap of faith is not a jump in the darkness, but it's walking in the light. It's God giving you his spiritual glasses anointing your eyes so that you can see things in focus. And it's him moving you from pigeonhood into eaglehood. Amen? Last points, get this, on faith. Faith is the substance of things, I'm sorry, of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Preparation is proof of your belief. Does everybody agree with that? That means you got to start preparing for what you're seeing in this upcoming year and not just waiting for it to happen to you. Preparation is the highest act of faith. You know, I would look crazy if I'm in a class, going to the class and never studying. Preparation, never being prepared, never having my notebook, never having anything. Preparation is the highest act of faith. And lastly, when you believe something, you prove it by preparing for it. If you believe in God for change, stop preparing for a change. Amen? Stop preparing. We're going to prepare for Tariq to come home. Amen? We ain't going to have to wait. We're going to start preparing. Amen? And for God to turn it around. Amen? If you have a child that's wayward and doing something, let's believe God. Amen? If you have a job situation, start preparing for the good thing to happen. Amen? Whatever it is, start preparing. Stand to your feet, everybody. Come on. Come on. Quick, quick. God is doing something in you. A leap of faith is not a jump into darkness, but it's walking in the light by the direction of the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. I don't care if you have to put your hands ahead of you and you feel blinded. Walk. Don't stop walking. Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't stop walking by faith. The currency in the kingdom, say this, the currency in the kingdom that spins is faith. Amen. And no matter how wrinkled your faith is, how, me how messed up your faith is, it's still your faith in God's going to use it. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah, God. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. We thank you for your word, and we thank you for your way. Speak to our hearts like only you can. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Change us from the inside out, and help us to walk in this transformation. In Jesus' name. Lord, help us to love our brothers and sisters and really be an extension of your hands. In Jesus' name. Lord, help us to see your love in all those around us, whether it be our friends, our spouse, our, 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 our family. Do it, God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.